What it do, y'all? This your boy King Eric the Great coming at y'all with another video. Representing off the cuff radio, screwball radio, the cotton pickers. So, I want to talk about Bone Thugs and Harmony Resurrection album. And I was listening to it actually yesterday. And let me be the let me be to say that it was a very solid album. But at the same time, I could tell that a lot of the chemistry wasn't there. The magic wasn't there. So Here's the story that happened behind that album. Crazy Bone didn't really want to be a part of this project because he was touring, he was shooting singles and videos for pushing his solo project, which was at the time was Thug Mentality. And Ruthless, they wanted the Bone album so they could get a quick buck. Crazy wasn't really with it, but at the same time, there was a lot of money on the table. And of course, Crazy Bone being the businessman, he, was, he wasn't going to turn that bag down. But here's what Ruthless wanted to do. Ruthless wanted to market Busy Bone as the next phenomenon. Like somebody with Michael Jackson superstar appeal. But it, you could tell that he had a lot going on at that time. And they couldn't really, couldn't really market him like that. And plus, the group was going through it as well. Flesh was about to go to prison. Busy wasn't showing up for shows. Crazy just went ahead and just submitted vocals and kept it moving. But what I liked about this album, they gave a new sci-fi type vibe to it. Like the production level was on a different level. Like they went away from the demonic doomsday sound and sound to a more scientific sci-fi sound. Like you can hear that on Righteous Ones. You can hear that on Battle Zone. Change the World. They were some of my favorites up there. That album was pretty solid. But... Crazy even broke it down a while back. Why? Because he said, hold on, I'm going to read this. Up. He said, I'm going to break it down for y'all. Ruthless, Ruthless Records was actually the best place for us because, you know, we or originated with them. So they always knew how to handle, set up marketing and promotion and go after our audience like you're supposed to. But see, back then we were still young when we were still signed to Ruthless. You know what I'm saying? We were still trying to gain an understanding of the business and how it was run. But you know we were caught up being celebrities. You know when when you come on when you come in and you are instant celebrity, it's hard to slow down and be like we need to slow down and handle this business. You know like busy busy was a rider. He was running around on his busy bone thing on the very early stages of his of our career, which was shocking to all of us. The way he came out and just separated himself from bone all of a sudden, that was shocking to us because had we made it all, five of us was tight, and what he was doing was just shocking like. How can you all of a sudden, as soon as we get our first paychecks, everything is different? Everything. Like, you don't hang with us no more. You try to stick the record company up just to come to perform with us when this is supposed to be a group. But, man, we wasn't understanding none of that. Like, where is all this coming from, you know? So it was all new, and we were having problems with him. And then the problems between us and him started affecting Rufus Records because they would have to get in the middle and try to play the mediator between us and him. And we were like, man, this is our dude. Why do we need y'all to meditate what we're doing? We grew up together. But this is how he was making it. He was making it like this. He was making him himself unavailable, you know. That's why us crazy, lazy, wishing flesh have always been to come together throughout all our history. It's plain as day. We've all been able to come together no matter what. What kind of turmoil, what kind of disagreement, what kind of fight we had the day before. We was always able to come together, and it's still that way, except for Busy. He always been that way. Then he said on Resurrection. I mean, a lot of the songs would change when I came in. I'm talking about a lot of songs I wasn't on. They were kind of done already, and it was like I didn't really touch none of those songs because I didn't hear none of them. But when I came to the studio, they were feeding me all new tracks. Like, here, put some hooks here, do this and do that. So, like, I don't really... Hear those songs? Those songs come into the mix when it was a time to put all the songs together. Okay, so what are we going to put out? So I was like, man, it's whatever. I wasn't trying to put too much input on this album anyway, so I ain't mad. I didn't really care. And he said, so we talked about the whole resurrection era. And one thing I want to make clear to you is that, explain to me, it's not that this little thing of bitterness that a lot of people think. Crazy Bone said, oh yeah, oh yeah, definitely, definitely. But people need to understand, it's not because of the beef that me and Busy had. I mean, I got into it with all the Bone members. Like, recently, 
me and Lazy got into it. We got a little spill on Facebook or whatever. Man, I wasn't tripping on that because the very next day, Lazy called my phone. And we talked for like three to four hours. And it was like Busy had never done that. This is how Busy made it seem, as, it seem to us as a group. Like, he used us to get to where he wanted to go. And he thought he didn't need us no more. He tried to play us. But it backfired on him. And that's, to me, the whole situation why Bone is not together. Because he was never able to humble himself enough to wholly come back and be a part of Bone. They love you as Bone. So two weeks later, I get a call from the executives at Rufus Records telling me I was going to have to cut my album short. Because at the time, Tamika had the right to cut that album short if she wanted to. They were telling me I had to cut my album short. So I was like, man, what are y'all talking about? I was furious. They tried to bring it to me like the album's not sound the way it usually sound without your involvement. Just trying to pump me up. Like, I don't see what you're trying to do. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, you need me now. But I was upset about it. All that little stuff they was doing was not working for me. They had different people call saying, it's just not sounding the same. These guys need you in there. I was basically backed against the wall. I had no choice because they told the record company, Relatively Records at the time, that they wanted to cut it short. So I was upset about that because dude had... And that's the problem I had. And they, that ain't right. Because dude had his chance. That's why I said for you that Tamika Wright fuck Roof was up. The shit was like seven to eight songs. They even had a pop tribute that I was missing. But that's what's happening with that album, man. I mean, Crazy wasn't really involved like he should. And it felt like a cash grab because the Bone name alone was was a selling point. And I... But... You couldn't even tell that the group was going through those problems like that because those songs actually sounded pretty good considering the time has changed and we were entering a new millennium at the time. Even Flesh showed out on that album. Like Wrong Righteous Ones in the intro. And I, and even Busy said he didn't really like the um, One Night Stand, I mean the Ecstasy song. But it was a dope album though, man. But that's one of the main reasons why Bone was going through it. That album didn't really do the numbers that it should, even though it went gold, it went platinum, but it didn't do the, the bone numbers because of the problems that the group was having at the time. So, let me know what you guys think, man. Subscribe, hit the like button, holler at me.